and I see like the um, the, the stained glass windows like right in front of me too. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's like I'm talking straight to Jesus. It's kind of cool. Really uh, makes you check your facts. Um, I'm Pastor Seth uh, at, here at Prince Street Church, uh, pastor of student ministries and visitation. Um, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, we're going to do, I have a couple announcements, then I'll do the scripture reading and some prayer. Um, first announcement, we have um, our pastor profile up on the UB website, so that process has begun there. Uh, so we're just asking for prayer for wisdom and guidance, um, that we get the, the right people uh, contacting us, and that we have wisdom uh, with that process started. Um, another announcement for the youth, we're still looking for youth leaders. Uh, our primary uh, gathering time is Wednesdays. Right now, our schedule's been a little bit different during the summer. We've been doing 6 to 7.30, uh, but in the school year, we might transition back to a two-hour So all you would need is a couple couple hours on Wednesdays and just the willingness to be there and be present. Um, as far as any other announcements going on, I think that I touched on them all. Uh, just continue to be praying, like I said, for the, uh, the pastor position and all of that process going on. So today for the scripture reading, I'm going to read Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let's all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come here today and we just thank you that we can gather, that we can worship you, that we can learn more about you, God, that we can find ways that we can make ourselves even more like your son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your wisdom, for your guidance, uh, as we start the process for looking for another pastor. We pray that you bring the right pastor in the right time, God, that, that we're relying on your timing. We just want to be praying for those in need, uh, whether it's a sickness, whether they aren't able to get the necessities that they have, God. We just pray that we can be a loving support for those people, that we can show your love, that they can see your compassion, that they can feel your comfort, God. We want to be praying for just wisdom, just in the community, in the your wisdom in our church leadership at this weird times where the virus is still present and things are fluctuating back and forth but just give us wisdom give the community wisdom help us all to be safe and protected from everything that's going on we pray all these things
believe Samantha Wilhide will be bringing this sermon to us today, so you guys can all welcome Samantha. Actually, it's the first time we're in a church since March. Um, my church back in the Lehigh Valley is a little bit too big for people to feel comfortable to meet in person yet. We've been doing some outdoor worship nights and things like that, but nothing's like being here with people on a Sunday morning. So I'm really thankful for all of you for inviting me here to speak. Um, so I was thinking about what I should share this morning, what I should preach on, and continually I was thinking about my time in Young Life, and, and I work for the ministry Young Life. This church generously supports me um, financially every month and people in the congregation as well, and so I was reflecting on my time as a Young Life leader, and I was reminded of the first time I ever led at a Young Life club. Young Life Club is a lot like youth group. We play games and we sing songs and there's a message about Jesus. Um, and so I was reflecting and in my first ever club was my freshman year of college. It was spring semester. Uh, it was the first time Emmaus High School in the Lehigh Valley was introduced to Young Life. There was a group of kids who went to camp the summer before, a couple of them met Jesus, and there was one girl in particular named Grace. So she was a baby Christian. She just met Jesus that summer, and she was really, really nervous for club to start, as was I, being a new leader. And she had one friend in particular. Her name was Delaney, and Delaney was really popular, captain of the lacrosse team, really was critical of Grace's new faith. She didn't, she wasn't quite sure if she believed it. They grew up as best friends, and so seeing your friend change in, after a one week at a camp must have been pretty startling for her. And so Grace was really nervous for Delaney to come to Young Life Club and to hear about Jesus. And, and I know that for a lot of people, seeing someone meet the Lord or seeing a close friend meet the Lord is one of the biggest things to impact your faith. And so I really wanted this for Grace. I really, really wanted Delaney to come to know Jesus as a way to strengthen Grace in her faith. And so I was really nervous and club happened, the games went well, songs went well. It seemed like Delaney was having a fun time. And after club, we go to a fast food place, either McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or whatever. And so we all run out to our cars. Grace is sitting next to me. Delaney's in the back and two other girls. And I was parked in. There were two cars behind me. And I was nervous for whatever reason. You know, I was in college and I was scared of this sophomore high schooler. Um, and I was like, oh, no, we, we can't just sit here in the car. Like, that's boring or awkward or I don't know what to talk about. Like, I didn't really know how to talk to high school girls very well yet even though I had just been one. Um, so smart freshman Samantha decided, I'm just gonna drive over the grass. Like I'm just gonna whoop, like right over their grass. And so I did, I went right over the people's yard that we were having club at onto the road and we were the first ones to McDonald's. So I guess I got a badge of honor for that. <laughs> but um, the man who had trained me and who's my co-leader, his name was Chip, when we got back from McDonald's to clean up the club room, he was not very happy with me. And I got quite the lecture that night. And although I wasn't instantly wise from that moment on, I made other stupid mistakes. Um, I learned never to drive over the grass of whoever's yard we were um, having club at. So that was my first instance <laughs> as a leader. Um, but looking back, I am so thankful for the ways that I've grown in my faith by leading girls, answering their questions, and just learning with them. It's really, really challenged me in a lot of ways. But one of the biggest things I've learned as a leader is how to listen. Um, constantly in my leader training, we were taught how to ask good questions, 
how to listen. And, and I've learned over the years that it's less about what I have to say or to teach to my girls and more about what they can teach me or tell me about themselves. Um, and I bet you all can relate to this feeling of just wanting someone to listen. We just want people to know our story, to hear where we're coming from. And, and there's so many times when people are bombarded with opinions, especially in today's world, there's lots of opinions and you wanna be heard and listened to. Um, and in my time leading, I, it's my goal to have kids fall in love with Jesus because he's the most captivating person, right? Like he answers all questions with more questions. He knows how to engage people in ways that aren't even like what you'd expect him to say. He's always mindful of people, of their lives, their interests, their joys, what they're suffering when he's with Fishermen, he talks about fish. When he's with farmers, he talks about seed and soil and weeds. He always speaks the language of the people that he's talking with. And one of the like catchphrases of young life is, you have to earn the right to be heard, or they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I really think Jesus embodied this. He listened to people. He waited to share this good news that he had. Um, and so, Typically, I share on a story of Jesus, an encounter with a person that he had, but I feel like you guys can handle a little more than just that. Um, so we're going to be looking in James this morning. So you can start turning your Bibles to James chapter 1. Um, but I want these stories of Jesus to be a backdrop to this passage that we're going to be looking in. Um, because I think that any passage that you read, if you go and you look at Jesus's life, he embodies it fully. And I know you all know these stories from when you were in Sunday school or whatever, when you were in the nursery, you've heard these stories. And so I want them to serve as a backdrop um, for the different topics we're talking about today. And think of the bleeding woman that Jesus encounters and how he listens to her, or the blind beggar, how he sees him in the midst of the streets when most people pass him by, or the rich young ruler that most people think has everything he could ever need. Jesus still listens, still hears. Or the woman caught in adultery when she's pushed aside. Jesus still listens, still hears her, and knows her value. Um, okay, so James chapter 1. We are going to be reading verses 19 through 27. And we're going to break it up into chunks. Verses 19 and 20 say, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. I'm going to say that again. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Uh, my mom had to work this morning. She works in a nursing home in Carlisle. And I'm a little thankful because I think if she was here and she heard me reading those verses, she'd probably roll her eyes after 25 years of me not really following them. Um, but I think in my, in my life, I've begun to realize why God gave us two ears and only one mouth. Um, and this is something that this verse is easy to read, but not always easy to live out. Um, but we're going to come back to it. I, I could honestly spend the whole time talking about those two verses, but I think James has a lot to say. So we're going to keep going, and we'll circle back. Verse 21. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. One of the other things that I really emphasize with my Young Life students are the lives of the Pharisees. I think for a lot of young people today, a Pharisee is more relatable. They, they see religion as rules and judgments, and sometimes I actually empathize with the Pharisees because I know it's really easy to get caught up in your judgments of others or your pride 
And, and I know that really, in reality, the Pharisees are just trying to live God's word so perfectly that they become prideful in the midst of it. Um, and so James goes on to address this. In verse 22, he says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So it's funny because in today's society, you can't imagine not knowing what you look like. In fact, I can actually see myself in this little thing right here. Um, but back then, they didn't have cameras. A lot of them didn't have mirrors. They maybe saw their reflection in the water, and that's about it. So this is a pretty relatable statement for them, to look at the mirror and walk away and not know what they look like. Many people probably didn't actually know what they looked like. Um, but James goes on to say, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I love the line when he says, the perfect law that gives freedom. Because I think that's what it is. In, the, in a girl or a high schooler's world, when they look at religion and they think it's rules and laws and and it actually takes away joy. That's, that's the opposite. Listening and following God's word gives us freedom. When we're working within boundaries, we to live within those boundaries. And I, I think about my childhood. Again, maybe I'm happy my mom isn't here this morning. Um, but I think about my childhood, and I think about the first two verses we read about being quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to be angry. And I think how much more joy and excitement and less anger I would have had in my childhood had I listened to those verses. If I would have just lis listened patiently to my parents rather than arguing back or my little brother um, when I never wanted to hear what he had to say. If I just would have been quiet and listened to his words um, so much anger and wrath would have been taken away from the, argue, the petty arguments that I got into as a child. Um, my grandparents are laughing because they know of these arguments. Um, but I think that for a lot of us, this could take a lot of tension away from relationships that we have, right? If we were able to live into these words. But James doesn't end there. Um, James is known for his bluntness. He's pretty blunt. He's not scared to sugarcoat his words. So these next two verses are that. Um, verse 26 and 27 says, Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. That's pretty hard, right? Pretty hard to hear. I'll read it again. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So let's bring this back to where it started, Jesus, those different stories that I asked you to keep in the back of your mind. When Jesus ministers to people, he's always listening carefully, deeply, attentively. Um, when asked a question, he responds with a question. He's gently probing, softly inviting whoever it is he's talking to, to reveal themselves to him. Um, and, and Jesus knows all things. He's God, right? He's, he's fully God and he's fully man and he knows everything, yet he still asks questions. I think one of my favorite stories is the woman at the well. So she's a Samaritan woman. Jesus is passing through Samaria with his disciples and he decides to stop for a drink of water. And so Jesus, a Jew, a male Jew, is talking with a Samaritan woman, unheard of in that day. Um, and he knows everything about her. He knows her whole story. 
from beginning to end, from that moment on and everything before. He knows it all. And he has the best news ever, right? Eternal life, he knows. He talks about living water in that passage. Um, But he doesn't quickly jump to conclusions or tell her what he knows. He asks her questions. He asks, woman, why are you here? Or can you get me a drink? Like he engages her slowly. And eventually she says, well, I don't have a husband. And he says, yeah, I know. (laughs) You have five, actually. You've had five. And he, he's so gentle in the way that he comes about. And he, that, that phrase I said earlier from Young Life, he, he earned the right to speak into her life um, by just engaging her softly and gently um, and even really giving her the time of the day, being a, a male Jew in this situation. And I just think if we were this swift to listen to people, how much less wrath and anger there would be in our conversations with our friends, our family, and people around us. Um, He's able to actively listen to God's word, yet still listen to the cries of people in the world, which I think is a really hard line to, to walk. Because we're, especially in today's society, we're constantly battling, okay, what am I listening to that's just the world? And what am I listening to that's God? It's hard to know. Like, when do I listen? When do I share? Um, But I think Jesus embodies it well. He listens to these people. He doesn't adopt what they think necessarily, but he listens to them and is slow to speak and very slow to get angry. There's really only one story of Jesus getting angry in his whole 33 years here on earth, um, which is pretty incredible. And the the biggest example that Jesus shows is the cross, right? Like I, we, in Young Life, we have like a sequence of talks and there's one night in particular where we talk about the cross and we just go through the whole story so that high schoolers know what the cross is, like what it actually means for them. And In these stories, it's astonishing. Pontius Pilate is there with Jesus, and and he actually knows that Jesus isn't guilty. He can tell that Jesus is blameless, and so he's trying to throw Jesus a bone, essentially, and he's asking Jesus, defend yourself. Like, are what these people saying true? And Jesus doesn't respond. He's, He's quiet. He listens to the cries of the people in the crowd. He listens to what Pilate has to say. He's not thinking of what he's going to say. He's not thinking about how angry he is. Or, I mean, honestly, in that moment, he could have wiped all of those people out, but he didn't. He just was quiet. He humbly accepted this position he had to take. He was listening to the Father while listening to the people. And even, like, one of the craziest things is when he's on the cross, he asks God, Forgive them. Forgive them for what they do. They don't know. They don't know what they're doing right now. So even in that moment when I would be so quick to fight back or fight for myself, Jesus is silent. He's quiet. He's praying on their behalf. Um, And I just think there's so much to learn from that, from that one example of how humbly he accepts this position that he's been given. Um, And so... What I want to challenge you guys with is who or whom in your life is God asking you to listen to? Not to preach at, not to share your opinions with, but who needs to be heard in your life? I know that for me, it's really a funny balance because I'm great at listening to my high school girls go on and on and on and on about their lives or whatever or break up they're going through. Um, but when it comes to my family, it's always really hard for me to listen. So there's people who are more challenging to listen to and people who are a little bit easier. Um, but I just challenge you, who, who do you feel like I need to just listen to them? I don't need to fight with them. I don't need to share what I know. Who do I just need to listen to? Who can I be 
quick to listen, or yeah, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Sometimes I get those words mixed up. Um, and that's what I challenge you guys to do, because I feel like today we're in a world where a lot of people have a lot of opinions, and it's easy for us to just quickly chime in, but I encourage you guys to be listeners. Um, if there's anything I've learned, when I'm being a good leader to my girls, it's actually when I walk away from a conversation not having said much, when I've sat and I've listened to them and, and asked good questions of them and asked, why do you think that? Or what led you to believe this? Or questions like that. And so that's what I want to challenge you guys with today. Um, I've been thinking about this passage for a while, um, and I just encourage you guys to go read it again spend some time in it. I think it's easy to be here on a Sunday and hear a verse and feel encouraged and then forget it tomorrow. I do that all the time. So I encourage you. And, and James, this, is, this book is really relevant to what's going on in our world right now. So I'd encourage you to read the whole book of James in your quiet times this week. Um, but yeah, that's what I have for you guys. I'm going to pray. And then I don't know what's happening next, but I'll pray. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this congregation. We thank you that we're able to gather here together as a body of Christ. Lord, we just ask that we would follow your example, that we would be the best listeners that everybody we know knows, that when people would think of us, they'd think of, wow, they're really good at listening. They hear me when I speak. And so I just ask that you'd help give us this humble spirit that you embody, um, and that we would just speak your truth into the darkness that we see around us in this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.